friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm working on a pair of slacks for my son who's got another wedding to be in. This is my youngest son who was in his brother's wedding just a couple months ago. And now he's going to fly down to San Diego and be in one of his best friend's weddings. And so he bought these slacks uh, online and when they came in they ended up being longer and he was sure he'd ordered the right size but they're still way too long and so uh despite his long legs and so i'm uh, he brought them over to me yesterday and wanted me to hem them up for him and so that's what i'm doing i already have the first leg done and i figure well while i'm at it i might as well show you how i do this because when it comes to hemming a pair of slacks it's a lot better to you're better off to hem by hand than really any other means. Now the very easiest way to do it that might be totally invisible is to get that, uh, that it's, it's like a interfacing but it's in a tape form that's used as, and it's fusible that's used for specifically for hemming. So it comes in a long skinny strip and I don't know if they make it better than they used to, but what I found, I never actually used it myself, but my mom used it a few times when I was growing up and she used to make me some clothes. And it would seem after so many washings, it would just, it would just start to come apart. So if you want something to hold for a longer period of time, it's better to do it by hand. And another thing is if the slacks have any kind of taper to them, using that fusible tape isn't going to be the best method again stitching by hand is going to be you're going to get the best result with that now obviously it's going to take longer than using the tape or sewing by machine but you're going to get a better look i mean we're dealing with slack so we want a cleaner nicer look and then if you have a taper you're going to need something that when you fold that over it's going to be able to work around that taper otherwise if you use the tape or you use the sewing machine you're going to end up having some puckers that are going to be really stand out but when you stitch by hand this is why i like to quilt my quilts by hand uh, it's a lot more forgiving and then you can use tiny stitches that are less likely to show so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in close here and show you how to do this okay so what I've done here is I've already obviously cut this where I need it to be allowing about let's see this is about three quarters of an inch approximately so I left myself an inch and a half to work with so I could fold it over twice and then I ironed it down. Now, since this is kind of a stretchy, smooth fabric, I did go ahead and pin it. Typically, uh, depending on the, what the fabric the slacks are made of, you might be able to get away with just ironing it and not having to pin it. But this is, was not wanting to stay in place, so I pinned it in four spots. You may want to put even more pins in it than this. So I've got my needle threaded, and I like to double my thread over. You can do a single thread. That will make it a little less visible. And then I've got my knot tied in the end. So I just tie, I'll go ahead and do that because I was gonna do it on camera anyway. So I just tie a regular knot. I don't even do a full square. It's not necessary. I just need it enough that it's not going to pull through after when I do that first stitch. I like to start from the inside seam. Now the good thing about this is when you're stitching here where you've, where you've got these pieces of fabric like this, you don't have to worry about it being so hidden because you can just go deep into that without coming over to the other side of the pants at all. And so I like to take advantage of those and do a stitch or two right there where I can totally have it hidden because that's not going to show at all on that side. So what you want to do is I like to, you can use a thimble, but I just like to use my finger because I can feel better just how far I'm going through that fabric because you just want to barely feel the tip of the needle starting to go into your finger and then you bring it right back up okay so you can see i'm doing basically a whip stitch i'm not doing a straight stitch like this because especially in a case like this where the pants are kind of stretchy and they do have a bit of a taper on them doing the whip stitch is going to be more forgiving and allow it to have more stretch so i like to for a case like this 
Um, if I was wanting a stronger hold and I wasn't worried about it showing on the outside, I would do a lot more stitches. But because of this situation, we're trying to keep it as hidden as possible, I like to spread the stitches out. So I'm doing almost a three quarter inch, about a, well, more like a half inch apart on my stitches. Okay, so you can see right there. You can really barely see it. And that's what you want. You want it as invisible as you can get it. So just poking it through there too, where you can just barely fill it with your finger and then bring it back up. Make sure you've gathered some. Basically, you're just trying to grab a couple of threads. In fact, this is looking better than the other leg that I did. <laughs> Probably because I've already got the practice from doing that leg since it's been a long time. It's been a several years since I've had to do this. And I think the last time I did it was for Justin on a tux that he had bought. <laughs> so anyway, you're just going to keep going like that around. So let me show you a close up where you can see how those stitches look from the inside. Okay, and then I'll do this one a little closer to the camera, though I can zoom the, the image in. Sometimes it gets a little too bright when I do that after I've got it recorded. So I'm feeling that. I wish I could show it to you from the other side as the needle's going through, but I have to be able to feel it. And if it, you pull it too tight and it gathers, then just let go of that thread and then pull it like this so it will pull back through and not be too gathered. Okay, there I had to smooth it out. I had pulled it a little too tight. So uh, just be careful you don't do that. And it's also better if you work with shorter pieces of thread than I'm doing here. I just hate threading needles. so. <laughs> I it's either that it's either using short pieces and then having to thread the needle more or dealing with a lot of thread that you're more likely to get into a knot so as long as you're careful about it you can help avoid getting those knots so again I'm going you notice that I'm going on this side here and just barely poking it through there I don't know if you can almost see where it catches my skin and then comes back up it doesn't hurt because I'm just I'm not sticking it into my finger I'm just barely catching my skin there now if you want you can double check your other side i thought that looked like that was a little too too much so i'm going to pull that needle back out so it's good to check this before you pull the needle through because that's going to be too showy so i'm going to do that again just barely get under there and then come back up through okay and now you can check See how much shorter I can see the needle there and it, you can see it, it's not near as visible as it was that last time. So it's a good idea, if, especially if you're like at that, that time I was like, eh, I have a feeling I got that too far over. Then it's a good idea to turn that fabric over and check it before you pull the needle through. Because once you pull that needle through, it's going to be harder to pull it back through. See how I'm having to keep pulling that thread like that, the shorter the thread gets, the less you have to layer, you know, pull it out like that to keep it from turning into a knot. So it just depends on what you want to deal with. Would, the, would you rather thread the needle more often or would you rather just be really careful to not have to, you know, when you see it starting to do that, you don't keep pulling, you just pull it back out like that and you keep doing that until it comes all the way through. See, I'd rather m mess with it like this and just carefully pull it through because you don't have to do that the whole way because as the, as the thread gets shorter, as you work your, get around to the other side, pretty soon you don't have to do that at all. So I'd rather do that than have to uh, cut and, th uh, and re-thread uh, the needle. Okay, so now that I'm halfway around, it's starting to go a lot faster because I'm not having to fuss with the thread as much. And now I'm to that other side where this hem, uh, where the seam is. And so I'm going to grab a lot more of that fabric there and go ahead and do that because I don't have to, as long as I don't poke the needle through to the other side, I don't have to worry about it showing. And you can even do, for the sake of hold, just making sure you're only getting that, that top layer of that seam you can even go ahead and do a few extra stitches closer together just to strengthen your hold and i'm going to do the same thing when i get back to the other side where i started 
Okay, and now I'm going to do a few more stitches because I want you to see now that I've got the th now that the thread's shorter that I can move a little bit faster. It really doesn't take long. I actually enjoy sewing by hand every now and then, even though it takes longer if I want something done quickly. Uh, then I d definitely going to use a sewing machine. But if it's something like this where it's not, I don't have to do much of them. I don't mind sitting and I don't have a zillion other projects. I don't mind sitting down or even standing up like I'm doing now and just going ahead and stitching by hand. I find it actually somewhat relaxing. So I was doing that when I was doing a lot of those quilts a while back. I haven't done quilts in a while, but, uh, and I would do the quilting by hand. I first started off trying to do it by machine and I found it to be very unforgiving. So I started doing it by hand and I was surprised at how quick I could get at it and how fun, how nice it was and how very relaxing it was. Okay, and now I'm back to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a few extra stitches right here in this seam. Just to make sure it's at least in two sides. I know it's got a really good hold. It should hold really good anyway, especially with the thread doubled over. Again, you can do a single layer of thread and have a more hidden uh, stitching, but I like having it uh, I like having it doubled over. Now, I made a mistake and cut this starting, got the knot too close to the end of that thread. I like to leave more leeway there or more tail so that I can tie my knot around it. But if you got enough where you can grab hold of it, then you can just take your needle and, and thread it through there to tie your square knot. And I usually do more than a square knot. I usually throw a couple more on top of that to make sure I got good hold because I'm all about that. Though it's doubtful he'll need to wear these slacks for more than the wedding. Um, just in case he needs them for something else, I want to make sure he's got he's got something that's gonna that he can wear for other things and it's gonna hold well for him. Okay, well I'm all done. I got both legs all stitched up now so I'm gonna go ahead and send him a text message because he's at work right now so he can uh, when he gets off work, he can come by and pick these up. So you may want to iron it down again after you stitch it, but then again, you may not because you may iron in more creases if it's a taper. Anyway, I hope that helps. And again, it's one of those things that, you know, you just start doing it. It takes a little bit of practice to get it down, but the more you do, do it, the better you're going to get at it. You'll get smoother at it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's fairly hidden. You'll see, you'll see a little bit there, but that's just to be expected. Uh, oh, and also consider using the smallest needle that you can. I tried to go smaller, but I find it impossible threading those teeny tiny little needles. So yeah, I know I need to get one of those little needle threaders, and I always forget about it because it's rare I ever need them. But uh, anyway, so I hope that helps. So now you can, if you have any slacks that you need to hem by hand, there you go. There's some tips for you. But if you need to hem jeans or anything like that, those are best just to go ahead and do on your sewing machine. So anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. Take me, take me.